the judges should be scoring rounds. And if and if you if you don't know about the scoring or judging criteria, here it is on your screen. Effective aggression, ring generalship, defense, hard, clean punches. Okay? These are the criteria. And what I want to do too, right? Since I have the criteria up here, what I want to do is kind of explain a little bit of how the criteria works so that we all can have an understanding. Now, now remember now, this has nothing to do with your opinion on whether or not Devin Haney won or lost. It's just to give you some form of education. So I'm using the controversy as a teachable moment, like basically I always do. And I just want to make sure that, you know, when you watch fights, I'm not asking you to judge fights, but when you watch them, though, you'll have a base, a foundation, uh, so that you know what you're looking at when you're watching fights. Because usually when you're watching something, if you don't know what you're looking at, right, then you can actually miss something. Or what happens most of the time, you can listen to the commentators, right? And then you'll go by with the commentators on a headset, say, live on a broadcast. And then all of a sudden, you formulate your opinion and your perspective based on that. And so that's why I wanted to make sure that we all have the same outlook, not the same results now. We don't have to agree on everything, but the same outlook moving forward when we watch fights. And I want to say this, too. I am not particularly a fan of the ESPN commentation. I hope that's a word. If it's not, I would say commentators. I like Andre Ward. I think he does uh, relatively better than everybody else um, that does commentating. But overall, as a group, I'm not really a big fan of them. Now, I'm not a hater of them. I respect what they're doing, and I appreciate their own perspectives. Uh, because, you know, Tim Bradley, he does have experience in, in the business and in the sport. So you got to have some level of respect for him. Andre Ward as well. These guys are basically Hall of Famers. And um, Joe Tessator as well. Leave that, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. But the point I'm making is that we know this to be a fact. This is not an opinion on what I'm about to say. Most of the times on the ESPN live broadcast, when you hear comment, when you hear them commentating, you hear a lot of bias going on for the A side, particularly the A sides that's, you know, on top rank, right? That's that's under the banner of top rank promotions because, of course, top rank promotion is the promoter uh, that has the the uh, agreement, basically, with ESPN. So I just don't like when it's bias. You know what I mean? So. When I say bias, right, even thinking about um, uh, uh, they had Max Kellerman on the broadcast. I usually don't hear him being an unofficial judge, but they had him on the live broadcast uh, this Saturday night with regards to the fight. And I wasn't really particularly in agreement with, you know, his scorecard so to speak. And so this is the judging criteria that the professional licensed certified judges go by when they're scoring rounds. Remember, if you didn't hear me before, I'm going to say it again. As judges, we don't score bouts. We score rounds, right? Effective aggression, ring generalship, defense, and hard, clean punches, right? Those are the criteria. Now, let me kind of go through a little. Well, I'm, I'm going to go through each one. I'm not going to go give like a deep rooted answer in all of them. Just just a base so that we can all understand what the judges are looking for. Right. So let's start with effective aggression. Right. So we see fighters advance their opponents all the time. They're being aggressive. Right. That's that's showing that they're trying to dominate that they are trying to dominate the fight, right? They're trying to let their presence be felt, right? They're trying to dictate, uh, 
you know, the pace of how their opponent is backing up as they are uh, advancing, right? But here's the key thing about aggression that judges look for when we talk about effective. That's the operative word in both of those words, effective aggression. And what is effective? What is effective aggression? It's where that fighter who's being aggressive consistently lands punches, right? And avoid the same punches from the opponent, right? So in other words, is you can't be effectively aggressive if you as a fighter is not landing punches, but as you're being aggressive, you keep getting punched in the body, to the head, in the face, right? or in the scoring zone, as we call it as judges and officials, right? So if you're going to be effective in your aggression, you can't be the one that's getting hit. You can't be the one that's 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 being counterpunched, right? You have to land clean shots when you're being effective in your aggression. Now, ring generalship. Who's controlling the action? Who's imposing their will, so to speak? Who's controlling the real estate? That's what ring generalship is. Are you imposing your will as a fighter? Are you imposing your style as a fighter? Do you know where you are in the ring at all times? Right? Are you controlling the real estate? That's ring generalship. Now, we should all know what defense is, right? But defense is when you're using, watch this, listen now, technical and tactical strategies to avoid being hit. Y'all heard that, right? When you're using Technical and tactical. Did y'all hear that? Avoidances, basically. And there are several techniques you can use to show good defense. You know, we can slip punches, bob and weave, parry, like a lot of fighters like to parry the jab. Block punches, right? Slip. Well, I said slip already. Roll punches, right? Then throw the hook behind the roll after we after you roll. Usually, I'm a southpaw, so I love rolling. I love when I throw that one two, and I step to the side, and then I roll and I come right back up Steve with that right hook. Bow. It's one of my favorite punches. So we know what defense is, right? What is hard and clean punches? Because it can look like a fighter is getting jabbed just because their head snapped back. But, but many times their head might not snap back because a clean punch was landed. You ever heard of the term or technique pull counter, Muhammad Ali mastered it. One fighter throws a straight punch. Guess what happens? It might look like the punch land, right? Because the fighter, the, the opponent who has good defense, pull their head back at the last minute, right at the end of the punch without getting hit. And then they come back with the counter, which we call it a punch, right? Floyd Mayweather mastered it very, very well. So it might seem like a punch is being landed, but that's not necessarily the case unless those punches are not blocked or slipped or parry, it's when that shot is landed clean in the scoring zone. 
I got to say in the scoring zone. So if somebody gets hit with a clean punch below the belt, that's not fair, right? That's not a part of the rules. If someone gets hit, if a fighter gets hit with a hard, clean punch to the back of the head, can't score that. Even if it was a clean, hard punch, can't score it because it wasn't landed in the scoring zone. The punch has to be landed clean in the scoring zone. And this is the judging criteria. Now, when I looked at the fight and the rounds that I scored for Devin Haney, he met this judging criteria. The rounds that I scored for Lomachenko, he met this judging criteria. And so that's how I came to the conclusion that Devin Haney won. 